Well, I'd like to uh, wish everybody a good morning. Um, thank you for all coming this morning to uh, fellowship with us and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and we're thankful the roads are clear enough to where we can slip and slide our way here this morning. So, um, But we're thankful for everybody that could be here this morning. And um, Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, even though some of us are probably a little disappointed that spring is not uh, exactly the way we want it right now as far as this wet snow and everything, but we'll get through it. So we got to praise God no matter what. Um, just a couple announcements this morning. Um, just a special note, we're not seeing this, but men's Bible study, uh, Trent mentioned it last week, um, is going to start back up tonight. Uh, for those of you that want to partake, uh, 6.30 here at the church. It'll be on Proverbs 27. Um, and then just another note, uh, instruction class is usually tomorrow, but we're going to move that to Tuesday at 7.30. So hopefully uh, all of you with young families have grabbed a, a bulletin and you make note of that. Um, and then there's the Wednesday uh, Bible study um, via Zoom. Uh, Bible, Bible Prophecies, the Essential Study at 7 o'clock. And then next, this coming Sunday, Lord willing, uh, 9 a.m. Sunday school, uh, same 10.30 a.m. worship service. Um, and you see the reminder there if you're looking under the Sunday, March 19th, uh, Trail Ridge Camp offering early bird special for only $100 if you sign up by April 30th. So uh, for those of you that want to young people that want to go to Trail Ridge. Uh, very good opportunity. Um, thanks to all that have sponsored the radio, uh, the Word of Life radio broadcast. And thank you for your contribution to the backdoor offering for Cornerstone Christian Academy and Pacific Garden Mission. Uh, the church collected a total of $762 divided between the two uh, ministries. So praise God for that. Um, Jen, do you want to make an announcement? Good morning. I was going to do this at Ladies Aid, but that got canceled due to weather. So um, just a brief announcement. As you know, we've been doing a young women's ladies Bible study for several years now, and we're going to transition over just to a woman's Bible study. So that means all ages are welcome. Um, we just really feel it's time to mesh the ages, right, and kind of follow that Titus 2 model um, and fellowship together and learn God's word together. So there is a sign-up sheet on the back table, not committing you to come, but more of a way to get you the information for what we're going to be studying. Um, we're going to start with a series that Revive Our Hearts did last October. Um, and so it's a podcast. There are a couple copies of the transcript of that on the table. So if you prefer that, you can take one of those. Um, we can also email that to you if you just want to put your name and your email address on that sign-up sheet. Um, and just put how you would prefer us to send you the podcast. You can always find it on your own, but um, we we'll are gladly send it to you so you know exactly what we're going to be studying. Um, there's also an outline uh, that was put together. Uh, just to help you follow along with the, the podcast a little bit and then prepare for the Bible study. So there is no true leader. Um, it's just Kayla and I are organizing it, but we're not leading it. It's just um, we're all going to share and partake. Uh, our next meeting is planned for April 5th at 10 o'clock at church. So And at that time, we'll also talk about if that's a good day, a good time for everyone. So we just... Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, but I um, encourage you to think about coming to that. Thanks. All right, thank you for that. Uh, does anyone else have any announcements before we continue? All righty. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we're thank you. we thank you for uh, getting us here safely this morning so that we can worship in your house and and we're just thankful for this opportunity. Uh, thanks again for getting us 
getting every every family member here, every family that's represented here uh, through the snow and, and through the slipperiness of what we have to travel now. And Lord, we just ask that uh, that you could bless this service and that we could turn our eyes upon Jesus like that, like that hymn says and, and just give you the glory and worship that you deserve. So Lord, thank you for this opportunity to worship you yet again, once again this week. And we just want you to get all the, all the uh, worship and, and glory that, that you deserve. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So if you could stand um, and turn to hymn number nine, I sing the mighty power of God. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth, runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So if you're trusting in the Lord Jesus this morning, I, I invite you to uh, help me say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge. 
Christ took away from the dead. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. Please be seated. All right, we're going to take some time for prayer requests this morning. Um, obviously, continue praying for our shut-ins and, and the people in our congregation and in our families and lives that, uh, that need special prayer right now. Um, I'm not going to list everybody off, but I'll, I'll try to remember them in prayer here. Does anybody have any special needs or anything they want to they want me to come to the Lord with this morning Richard Parker broke his femur I didn't know that so yes pray for Richard as he has his as his leg heals if you didn't hear breaking his femur bone And Michelle, you had your hand up. Oh, okay. Anybody else? That's that's a pretty bad one. Um, obviously, with it's kind of a hard time of year, isn't it? You know, you get you get that sneaky ice that you're walking on, and you just never know. We all got to try to be careful. I know I've almost I've almost slipped the last couple weeks <laughs> myself. Um, so yeah, it's it's a dangerous kind of a dangerous time of year. Also, just be praying for our government right now with uh, everything that's happening in the world and that our leaders would turn back to the Lord and pray for our kids, uh, which I'll try to include here um, as we growing up in this world right now, the way things are, and I know nothing is new under the sun, like Solomon said, but there's just, there's a lot of evil right now that that is going on in this world and we just pray that our kids can keep their eyes in Scripture and keep their eyes on Jesus and try to try to live for Him. Yeah. So, if there's nothing else, I guess I'll uh, I'll I'll continue in prayer here. Father, we just want to come to you this morning, thanking you for who you are and. The, what I just mentioned, the evils of the of this world, Lord, that's the world's been evil ever since the fall of man. And Lord, you're the only one that can take our sins away through Jesus, and you're you're the only one that can give us true joy and peace in in this world and in every situation. And we just have. Uh, so many people in our congregation, Lord, that that need your prayer right now, prayers right now, Lord, and each and every every one of us needs that. But uh, there's people that really need it right now that I want to pray for, Lord, and we just want to pray for. Start out with praying for Don and Mary and their uh, health, uh, physical needs, Lord, that you could continue giving them what they need so that they can not only be with us but also enjoy retirement. Um, also for Ron and Lola, and uh, both their health challenges too, Lord, that you could you could uh, give them comfort and healing if if it, if you so choose. And Stephen and Marilyn, Lord, and Muriel, and I know I'm going to forget some people, Lord, and forgive me. Uh, Sharon and Jerry, and and their prayer needs and physical needs, Lord, that they. They need us to continue to remember them uh, with. And, and Belva Parker, Lord, and, and Charles, uh, Lord, that you continue to bless him. We're just so thankful that he's still with us. And, and also for other people, maybe outside our congregation, but uh, that are family members, uh, Danny's niece, Jordan, that is suffering through cancer. And, Lord, that you could just... Uh, Obviously, we pray for healing, but we know that that's not always, that's not always that what's going to happen, um, Lord. And we know everybody is in, in your care, and, or you have your, you can, uh, 
exercise your power and your healing strength through in whatever ways uh, that you see fit and that is best for your glory. And Lord, we're just so happy to have the and privileged to have the power of prayer um, so that we can bring these people to you and, and let you know that how concerned we are. And also for Richard now with his with his broken leg, Lord, we just ask that you could, uh, whatever doctor's involvement there is, that you could give them healing hands and uh, give them the wisdom they need to help him and also that he would just know that we're praying for him and, and also that, uh, that he would just have his confidence in you, Lord, uh, in, in his faith in you, that he would be looking to you in this time of, that's got to be awfully discouraging. Um, also, Lord, for the ministries that we support financially, uh, Lord, you know who they are. I'm just going to list some. The Pacific Garden Mission and uh, the Pastor Phil and, and the staff down in Chicago, Lord, that what they're seeing now and what they've just gone through uh, as we've, we're on the backside of winter and what the amount of people they see and they help every every winter and even every summer and Lord we're just thankful that they're around proclaiming the gospel first but then also uh, helping people with their physical needs as well um, and, the, and the Kenya mission that we support uh, we just pray for all the pastors and, and the congregations over there Lord that they're growing and they're growing in faith, and they're growing in numbers, and people are coming to faith in Christ, and, and that's, that's the main thing. And we're just, we just want to keep them, hold them up in prayer for strength, and they have difficulties that we, have, we haven't experienced yet with the food shortages and, and the extreme health problems that they, it seems like they're always struggling with, Lord. Where in America, we are for the most part blessed with excellent health care and as of right now, we have plenty of food. So we just lift them up to you in prayer as well. And uh, for VCY America and the radio ministry and, and also for Trail Ridge Camp that uh, is so near and dear to many of our hearts as far as sending our kids and, and uh, the children's ministry and, and I guess the, the whole ministry of Trail Ridge. It's not just summer camp anymore. Um, we're, we're thankful for brother Aaron and his uh, his call to ministry and, and the excellent job that you uh, have him strengthened him to do also for Cornerstone and and Lord for the teachers and and all the staff there and, and the kids as well Lord that they would keep Jesus as the main thing and and that we would all do that um, also for our radio broadcast that it would that it would continue to go out on the airwaves to save souls and to, to wake up consciences that uh, did not have Jesus and don't have Jesus, Jesus, and to make them realize that He is the only way. And uh, also for Lord, I just want to ask for a special prayer. I, I should have announced this, I guess, to the congregation, but we all know, Lord, our church council needs a special prayer. Uh, the call board and and just the council in general, um, from Drew to each and every one of us uh, deacons and. Lord, that you could uh, strengthen us and give us special wisdom in, in this time as we, as we uh, sort through uh, the, the things that we need to do right now to try to, uh, to be patient uh, and to call, to call the man that you have selected already. And we believe that, Lord. And, and on that note, I just want to pray for Trevor as he brings a message this morning. Lord, that you've given him the right scripture verses this week and, and that he's meditated on them and prepared himself, as I'm sure he has, and that you would, uh, that you would bless him and give him the strength and, and help him to remember uh, and help us all to remember who we're working for, and that's you, Lord. Um, also want to pray for the persecuted church, um, not only in, uh, in, in all all points of the globe, Lord, and especially though in the Muslim and uh, the Islamic and the communist blocks of these countries that are especially hard on, on Christians and the people of God. And we don't have to look very far in the news or in publications of different magazines to realize 
how bad Christian persecution is around the world. And as of yet, we've, we might experience some light persecution in this country, but uh, we don't have it as bad as those, those poor people. And we just uh, want to pray for strength that they would, uh, that they would not renounce or uh, deny the Lord Jesus Christ in, in their time of testing. And give us the strength, Lord, if, if we're going to see some of that in the future in this country, uh, to prepare uh, by trusting in Christ and, and prayer and reading your word to prepare for that possible time. We also want to pray, Lord, for uh, our government, like I said, and our leaders, that they would come to Jesus. And it, 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 me personally, Lord, you know my heart on this, and it, it seems like an impossibility, but we know with God all things are possible. And for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, knowing that, that that area is the apple of your eye, and by praying that prayer, I'm praying, and we are, we're all praying and thinking about your future kingdom when, you, when, Lord Jesus, you will rule and reign on this earth, and we're all looking forward to that time. So thank you again, Lord, for this church and, and this fellowship and this time that we can come together as a congregation to worship you. And I would hope that we all individually would worship you and pray to you and, and read your word at, as we go throughout the week. And it wouldn't just be on Sunday mornings. And Lord, we just want to ask that you'd bless the, con, uh, the, the rest of this service and also that you'd bless the offering that we're about ready to receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And would the ushers please come forward right now. So before the message this morning, uh, if you could stay standing and turn to hymn number 124, Holy Bible Book Divine.
wonderful. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Thank you for coming to church today. Uh, again, my name is Trevor Scrady. I'm an associate pastor at Believers Fellowship Church in Viroqua. I'm glad to be here once again. I drove a long ways, 2.7 miles, all the way here and slid down the hill, uh, which was great. Uh, might do a sledding trip next time. But uh, anyways, great to be here. Thank you so much for coming. I'm um, looking forward to sharing God's word with you. And so if you were, if you were here last week, I'm, conclu- I'm, I'm finishing up this uh, two-part series. on. Um, it's called uh, That Thing, That One Thing, right? The One Thing. And we had a few things that we talked about last week. If you were not here, I'll, I'll review a few of them. Uh, so the first one, we talked about David, the one thing to seek. Okay, the one thing to seek. We have amazing things with David going on. He wanted to be in God's house. He wanted to be in everything that God had for him. And so those types of things with David can resonate in our lives when we want to go towards God's house. So you're here today. You made a great choice to be in God's house, and uh, you braved the weather, uh, the, the snow. It's amazing what God can do in our hearts, right? And he can do amazing things in our hearts when we're not in his house. It's that relationship we have with him. That's what that perfect relationship will do with you. Uh, he'll touch your heart in, in many different ways. Secondly, that one thing to prioritize. Remember, remember the rich young ruler who he had all kinds of stuff? And Jesus said that one thing you lack, one thing you lack, and that's to sell your stuff, give to the poor, and follow me. Well, he went away sad because he didn't want to give away his stuff. But you know why? Because his stuff had him. His stuff had him. So that was the most important thing to him rather than following Jesus. So he kept all his stuff, went away sad. That's my hope that we don't go away sad and keeping some things that may, maybe Jesus is talking, us, talking to us to um, maybe walk away from or get rid of. Then we talked about another point was that one thing to choose. The one thing to choose, remember Mary and Martha? Anybody remember who chose the right thing? Mary. Mary chose the right thing while Martha was busy trying to prepare food, clean the house, for the very, very special guest. Jesus, and she's got, she got all upset with Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. She's not doing anything. Jesus, get after her. Tell her, help me. And he says, well, one thing you lack. Mary's doing what she should be doing. And so we should be at Jesus' feet at times. Again, like I mentioned last week, serving, that's what Martha was doing. She continued to serve and serve and serve. There's times to serve, and there's times to just sit at Jesus' feet, right? The fourth one we, we talked about, to believe. The one thing. The one thing to believe. And about the Apostle Paul, we talked about the Apostle Paul. He had to, con- he had to correct and help the, church of, the churches in Galatia. Remember that? The churches of Galatia, they were getting confused by false, false teachers or telling them all kinds of different things that weren't correct. And so Paul had to kind of straighten them out. Tell them what, the, what exactly is the truth of the gospel. So those are the four, first four points. Are you ready for the next three? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Before I get to the next three, the one thing, the one thing that I was thinking about this morning is think about my grandkids. Yes, I do have grandkids. I know I look extremely young for grandkids. I got three grandkids. The fourth one coming next month. And... I think about those three grandkids right now as they, I watch them play together, and, and they're, they're five, three, and one, okay? So pretty, pretty good distance apart. So I watch them play. They have so much fun. They come and bounce off grandma, come to grandpa, and all kinds of fun stuff. But they get to the toys when they're playing with their toys. I know little Keiston. He's a year old. I know... Colson, the oldest one, he'll have a toy 
Keystone will go want that toy. That's one thing. That's the one thing he wants is that toy that the other kid has. You ever seen that before? Anyone with kids? Or, you've, or your kids are grown, and you think back to those years of, man, those kids, they just fight for that one thing that they want because the other kid has it. It's fun to watch them grow. It's fun to watch them uh, play together. But, you know, it's, it's, you see those things, that, that one thing. They're desperate to go get it. They'll take it from them. How desperate are we to have and obtain the one thing that God has for us? And these seven items that we're talking about. Take a look at 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3. This is our text this morning. Now, before I really get into the text, President Abraham Lincoln once said, Give me six hours to chop down a tree. I'll spend the first four hours sharpening my axe. Yeah, that's preparation, isn't it? He's preparing. Lincoln wisely highlighted the importance of uh, preparation in order to reach his goal. I spent the last, let's see, today's Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days watching girls' state basketball. I'm a huge basketball fan. I love the state tournament. I love all the preparation it goes into these girls. They start from, the, from, from preseason, practices, the, men, the mental capacity it takes to go through a season, the physical capacity it takes to go through a long season. Um, they're lifting weights. They're uh, training uh, right wit. They're doing all sorts of different things. In preparation of getting that gold ball, that one thing that they want is the gold ball, the trophy, to be number one in the state in their division. So I watch all these, these games and these girls. I see the evidence of the preparation it took to get to those, these goals that they had from the very first part of the year. It's all about preparation of gaining and obtaining that one goal of the gold ball. Lots of hard practices, lots of coaches yelling at them, lots of coaches instructing, wanting the most out of them. And yes, there's going to be some, some teams that come fall, just fall a little short of the gold ball, but they prepared. Second Peter chapter 3, verse, start verse 3 through 9, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. Verse 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing. Everybody say one thing. There you go. One thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. As I mentioned about training in physical training, mental training, for the girls in basketball to obtain that final goal of winning the gold ball. How much more do we as, as Christians, do we spiritually need to train and prepare our lives for the coming of Christ? That's the ultimate goal that we have as a Christian is to see Christ's return. When his return comes, that's going to be the best. I mean, I'm racing my family to heaven. I don't know how, who's going to get there first, but I know, um, I know when Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ rise, and then those Christians that are alive will rise after that. That's going to be glorious. I don't know about you, but that should put a smile on your face right about now. 
when you get to go see the Lord, when you get to spend eternity with Jesus, and we're having fun right now in church, but when Jesus comes and we get to see him face to face, that's going to be a glorious day. But what we have to prepare. The ultimate thing for us as a Christian is to prepare beforehand. The ultimate goal is heaven, right? The ultimate goal is to be with Jesus forever. The highest, you know, you think Jesus being raised from the dead, you think that was amazing, and we celebrate that at Easter, Resurrection Sunday. We, re we, we celebrate his resurrection, and we know that it was amazing, glory, most amazing, glorious day in history. But right now, when we can think about Christ's return, that's going to be the, that's going to, that's going to be so much more glorious than Christ's resurrection. Because how many millions of people are going to be going to heaven? Millions and millions of people will be in heaven forever. That day when this world will be like shocked and amazed at what in the world just happened. Aliens! That's <laughs> what they'll say. Abduction. But Jesus' return is going to be the most amazing thing. Okay? That's going to put the greatest movie in the silver screen kind of just a nada. Not even, why would you even go see that film when we could be in heaven with Jesus, right? It's going to pale. But any, the best movie is going to pale in comparison to this day when Jesus comes back. But that one thing that you and I should be looking forward to and preparing our lives for is Christ's return. Of all the things to prepare in life for, sports, tests, graduation. How many of you are glad you're, glad you're done with school? right? Job, marriage, parenthood, grandparenthood, right? Retirement, that one thing that we prepare our lives for, and we study for, we prepare all sorts of different ways. The one thing that we really need to prepare for is Christ's return. That's the one thing that really matters, doesn't it? As verse 8 says here, 2 Peter 3, don't forget this one thing. Don't forget about it. You know, see, the world may mock the church, expecting Christ's return, waiting for Christ's return, and they're like, well, has he come yet? No. Has he come yet? No. What are we waiting for? And so they could... The world could give us, they could be a downer for us, but we as a Christian, knowing our relationship with Jesus, knowing we, that we're go, on our way to heaven, we have, we don't know if, I don't know, and you may not even know, if Christ is going to come back before I say amen. Are you ready right now? If Christ came right this second, if Jesus came right now, because we don't know, Jesus doesn't even know the day he's coming. His father is the only one that knows. And he's sitting on the edge of his seat, Jesus, waiting. Can I go now, Dad? Hey, Dad, can I go now? I, they're waiting. I know. How about now, God? How about now? Can I go now? They're ready. He is, wait, he is on his way. We just don't know when. We don't know the day or the hour. The cool part is we can prepare and make sure we're ready. God's patient. His how many of you know his timetable is different than ours? He's, he's got a totally different calendar, guys. Our calendar, we, we know when to turn the calendar the next month, and we know when Easter's coming. We know all that kind of thing. We just don't know when Jesus is coming. So the best thing to do is get ready. Now, the first step in getting ready is totally giving your life to Jesus. 
receiving Christ as, his Lord, as your Lord and Savior. That's the most important thing. If you don't do that, Christ's return, you'll be left behind. If you don't have a, a personal relationship, if you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, given your life to Him. He said, I don't wish that any should perish, but that all will have eternal life. The question is, are we ready? And are we ready by receiving Christ in our life? Is that, that's the most important decision anyone could ever make. That is your eternity. That is your eternity. <clears throat> so, what are we doing today to prepare? As we have, if everyone here, maybe everyone here has given their lives to Christ, maybe they're, you're all saved, received Christ as your Lord and Savior. If that's the case, praise the Lord for that. Then, next steps are sharing the good news with other people. Share your testimony with other people. Preparing other people to go to, the, go, uh, to heaven with Jesus. Being, helping them prepare for Christ's second coming. Those are preparation steps for us. Okay? So, one thing to prepare. That's number five. Number six. We've got two more. Can you hang in with, with me? How are you doing? Okay? One thing to know is number six. One thing to know. When someone asks you questions about your faith, do you get uh, nervous? Do you get palms get sweaty? Anybody? Do you get? Does your mind go blank? And all of a sudden, you're, you know you know the word, you know the Bible, you know all those things, you've memorized scripture, and then all of a sudden you're on the spot, and then does your mind go blank ever? Besides me, anybody here besides me? Sometimes, I'm just telling on myself. I'm not perfect. I'm just saying, life is life, you know? Yet anybody else here get nervous? Anybody else here have their palms get a little sweaty? Mm hmm. It's okay. Sharing your faith is surprisingly simple, but sometimes we can get deterred by anxious thoughts, by nervousness, by, did I remember that scripture right? Did I tell them that right one? John chapter 9. If you got your Bibles, take a look at John chapter 9. This is going to be, this is an interesting portion of Scripture. I don't know for time's sake if I'll read the whole part, whole thing here. But Jesus healed a blind man. Every person from his neighbors to the Pharisees to the disciples even, were wondering how this even happened. What is going on here? This blind, Jesus took some mud and put it, some mud on, some, on, on this blind man's eyes. And guess what? The blind man could see again. The blind man could see again. I forgot I could walk around. <laughs> Jesus healed him on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees are freaking out. They're like, why, why is he doing it? He's a sinner. Proclaiming Jesus as sinner, not glory, praise God that this guy is healed, but condemning what Jesus did because it was on the Sabbath day. Please. Right? Because Jesus, he went about doing good, didn't he? I don't know about you, but healing somebody with, that's, that's blind from birth, and this is what happens, I can put mud on this guy's eye, he sees. That's good. That's not something that, that, that's a bad thing, right? But these, guys, these people, these Pharisees, are upset with Jesus because this happened. Then they said, okay, okay, I don't know if this is right, but I'm going to go find the parents. Let's find the parents. Parents, come here, come here. Is this really your son? Tell me about this guy. Yep, he's my son, and he has been blind since birth. They wanted to verify with the parents. Yes, yes, this is my son, blind from birth. I don't know what happened. I don't know who did this. I don't know how he's, seen, how he's seeing again or how he's seeing for the first time. Not sure. That's interesting that somebody, that these, these, some of these people, these Pharisees are, are 
accusing Jesus of doing something bad when something good actually happened. So, in verse, in, uh, verse 25 of John 9, It says, he answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. This is the guy that was blind saying this. One thing, everybody say one thing. One thing, very good. I know that though I was blind, now I see. One thing I know. One thing I know. I was blind, but now I see. Isn't that, isn't that how we were uh, before we became a Christian? Isn't that how we were before Christ opened our spiritual eyes? We were blind. We were broken. We were hurting. And when Jesus came into our life, he opened up our eyes to the evil. We were in darkness. To the, and we were serving evil. Before Christ. When Christ comes into our life, what happens? A transformation takes place. Your spirits become new. So we have this amazing thing happen with this blind man who says, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. I don't know how it happened. I don't know the scientific part of it. But I see now. That's a miracle. That's amazing. And it's a miracle for us to be able to see from right from wrong. It's a miracle for us to be able to worship and serve and come into this place to worship God together. Because now we see. One thing. We were blind, but now we see. It's amazing what Jesus does in our hearts. Now, we don't have to have a master's degree of theology or eschatology to be able to share the gospel with people, to explain how Jesus transformed our lives. We just let our lives be a testimony of what God has done in our, from the inside out. That's Jesus working. So that's our testimony that we have in our relationship with Christ. You know, I'll just share this short story with my dad. Some of you know my dad. Um, Alan, and he's since gone to be with, with the Lord. He's having fun now. <laughs> um, so he started Believer's Fellowship Church in our living room in 1981 in, our, in the Christian bookstore across from the A&W on Main Street. We were in our living room. Okay, kids, get, get your, get your uh, Bibles. Come in here. We're going to have a have a Bible study. So we started having people come in on Wednesday nights and we started church services. Dad didn't like people. He'd rather milk cows than be called to pastor. He was afraid to speak in front of people. He didn't like it. Couldn't stand it. But he knew the call of God on his life. So God did a change and a transformation in his heart instead of milk and cows, which he wanted to do all his life. Instead, he ended up pastoring for four, about 40 years. Isn't that something? How God changes? He didn't go to school. That's the point. He never went to school to be a Bible, to be a, a pastor. People got after him, well, you should have went to school. You can't pastor unless, you're, unless you went to school. Says who? Who said that? If you could read, and if you have the unction of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, you can preach. Right? He didn't have any degree in pastoring, yet God called him to pastor. So, for how many years? And thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people's lives have been touched. Lives are going to heaven because of that. Because he answered the call. He didn't worry about what people were saying, that you didn't have a degree in Bible to preach, to pastor. He just answered the call. That one thing is needed to share the transforming power of Christ with other people. 
Ask God to give you boldness in sharing with others how you were blind, but now you're seeing. Last one, one thing to do. One thing to do. I think I got about three minutes. I don't know what the time, how much time I have, but one thing to do is number seven, Philippians 3.13. Philippians 3.13. Most people don't remember who won the 400-meter semifinal at the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona. Anybody remember who won that? Uh, neither do I. <laughs> uh, they do, however, remember an incredible, incredibly moving moment between a father and a son. As 65,000 spectators gathered in the stands, Derek Redman passed 250 meters in about 17 seconds at the, time, at the time that he blew out his hamstring. Hamstring popped. He fell to the ground for about 30 seconds. His trainers and medical team came and see how he's doing. And all of a sudden he says, hey, I'm in the Olympic semifinals. I can't just lay here. So he pushed his medical team aside, looked up at the, as the other runners were running past him, going to the finish line. He says, I got to get up. So he gets up starts walking on the track again. And then something happened. From the stands comes his father, Jim, hurtling these, the bleachers, hurtling seats, running away and avoiding the, the security guards. He gets to his son, puts his arm around his back. Derek puts his arm around his dad's neck, and they walk together to the finish line. What a moving story. That's, that remains one of the most amazing moments in, in Olympic history. Thirty-one years later, thirty-one years later, it still moves people. Philippians chapter 3, verse, uh, let's see, let's do verse 13. See, no matter what our setbacks are, if we've ever had a setback, I'm, I'm, sure, one, I'm sure we each have had a setback of uh, one or two times in the past, maybe pain in, our, in the past. The one thing that you must focus on and pursue as a Christian is the finish line of your faith. The finish line of your faith. Verse 13 of Philippians 3. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are, are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. One thing. One thing. You see, in a world where there's, there's ease and emphasized and faithfulness is mocked, Paul's extraordinary uh, focus here, his mindset is here, is to inspire his race. And it, he's inspired by the race that God's called him to, to press on. Doesn't matter what I had happen. It me, what, what really matters is what's coming forward. I will press on no matter what's happened before. Like Derek Redmond, the Apostle Paul was no stranger to pain, no, stra no, no stranger to injury or setbacks. In his mission to share the gospel with anybody he could touch, Anybody, any place that he could plant a church, wherever that may be, anywhere, in his mission, he had some setbacks, he had some injuries, he had some pain happen in his life. He was left for dead as he was stoned in Lystra. He was naked. He had three, he, three times he was shipwrecked. Got bit by a viper. Supposed to die by this poisonous viper. He shook it off and said, God's not done with me yet. He was hungry. He was cold. He was in prison multiple times writing letters that we read off our pages in our Bible. In prison, he started praising with Silas and the doors flew open and the jailer got saved and his whole family got saved. One thing. It was one thing. He didn't think and meditate and ponder all the things that he went through. He didn't, 
He didn't feel sorry for himself. He pressed on. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. When we think about what's ahead, we should be excited. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.13, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So he encouraged himself, didn't he? Let Paul's example remind you to press on toward the goal to, which, to win the prize for which God has called you heavenward in Christ. Stay focused on the one thing. Everybody say one more time, one thing. <laughs> one thing. The finish line of your faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. What a glorious time it is in your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to be, be here together. You said in your word that uh, whether there are two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of us. We thank you so much for the power of that one thing that we've covered the last two weeks. The power of one thing where you're involved, you're included, you're the central part of our life. That, God, we can be restored. We can have a, a purpose and a vision and answer the call of God on our lives. To be able to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with anybody we come, come in contact with. To be able to press on. We thank you that we're doers of the word and not just hearing it today. But we walk outside these doors and we're absolutely doing your word. God, I thank you for your great grace on each person in this place, in their lives, as they're so, may, may be sorting through some decisions, they may be sorting through some different things in their lives, that, God, you will continue to order every step, make their path straight. Thank you that you're a light to our path and a lamp to our feet, giving us clear vision of we, what we'd, you'd have us do for you, that one thing. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for each person here as they leave this place, that they're, they are able to travel home safely. Most of all, be able to worship and continue to worship you and, and praise you and to, to uh, share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout this week. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you so much uh, for, for coming today and allowing me to share God's word with you. Well, I will see, I'll be back here next week, and uh, uh, God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Trevor. Um, as we close today, if you guys could stand and turn to hymn number 135, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
Let's close with prayer. Father, we thank you for the message that we received this morning about glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ and making sure, Lord, that we have things right with you, Lord Jesus, and that that is the main thing that we, Lord, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. And that's, that's the truth, Lord, that we share as Christians that everybody needs, especially, especially those that are not saved. And that's why we have churches, and that's why we fellowship, and that's what we're commanded to do is, is bring the gospel to every creature, every, every person. Bring the, bring the gospel um, and tell people about Jesus, the only way to get saved. And we're thankful for the reminder this morning. And help us to, uh, to want to be faithful and obedient this week as far as our jobs as Christians and, and to spread the gospel in, in, in any way we can. So we thank you again for the message and the time of fellowship that we could have this morning. And help us to leave here revitalized and, and ready to serve you this week with the time that you've given us. And we're just thankful for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So receive the, receive the benediction this morning. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.